The world is uncertain and things are beginning to unravel. Those who have prepared will win. We have stacked silver, we have stacked gold, emergency food, and brass. But what's next? Let's get into it. One stacker on a journey to find silver. International stacker. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is International Stacker and today we're going to cover the next commodity that will explode. And I really believe the future is really going to depend on this. But first, please look right before this video. If you see a big, large red button, it means you're not subscribed. 80% of you watching are not subscribed. So please subscribe, smash the like button and leave a comment below because it really helps this video get out to more people and it helps me a lot. Now, Let's just jump right into this, but first, big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Uranium Royalty Corp. So, there is one thing that no one can argue with, I think personally, and that it's governments around the world want clean energy. Oh, and this is my channel here. Check it out. All kinds of videos. Russia. Not Russia. <laughs> um, why did I say Russia? Because it's going on right now. Uh, Middle East, Africa, Europe, all over the place. You're going to love it. But back to the topic at hand, governments want clean energy, okay? And it really doesn't depend which administration it is, in my opinion. It just, that just is going to affect how quickly uh, we move there. So I believe it's eventually going to happen, no matter who is in office. Um, and it's going to be natural it's going to happen, because even if it's protracted, you know, the earth only has so much resources, it's finite, and uh, that, that move is going to have to happen. Now remember, um, gold itself is considered an incredible hedge against inflation, I believe silver too. Now, commodities, and especially when you're looking at energy commodities, such as oil, natural gas, uranium, they seem to be inversely correlated with dollar weakness, right? So when the dollar's weak, they act inversely to that. Silver, for example, has been, you know, one of the most explosive precious metals. Gold's kind of a slower mover, whereas silver seems to be more volatile, and that's why I think there's a lot of opportunity there. But its latest massive move in the bull market rallied, you know, from five dollars to fifty in, in a decade. Okay, and if you remember, it's been to fifty in the nineteen eighties with the Hunt brother episode, and then it's been there again. What was that? Two thousand eleven. So it's done it twice. That's about a thousand percent move. And boy, do I wish silver was five bucks. I was at a coin show yesterday uh, with a buddy, and we were talking about that because, like, the ch the cheapest silver got when I was stacking, I think, was twelve bucks. He was into silver and gold back when it was like five, six, seven, eight. He's like, man, I wish I stacked it higher. When looking at uranium, when it moves, it moves even more intensely. Um, it's really because of the global supply. It's really tight. Okay. So from 2001 to 2007, its price rose nearly 3,500%. Uh, and the important thing here to tell you all is that the world is already uh, dependent on nuclear energy. And if I pop to this slide right here. Um, so there's 441 operable reactors worldwide. 50, there's 51 new units under construction. Uh, 63 connected since 2013, okay? China's planning 150 new reactors in the next 15 years. India is 21. And this is gonna be a big market, guys, India and China. They have the highest populations in the world, and that just makes sense for them. UAE completed three reactors. I know for a fact um, Saudi Arabia's working on it. Um, I was in the Middle East for about nine years, if you remember, ten years. Upgrading or uh, UK is upgrading their nuclear fleet. France is to build six to fourteen. Russia was thirty six in China, but who knows what's happening with that? But it's in China, so they'll probably still do it. But these other areas might be up for discussions. Who knows? Japan has thirty three operable, and they're planning uh, to do more. In U.S., we've maintained 20% of the market share. So moral of the story is everyone's moving towards nuclear energy. And now that we have the issue with Russia, uh, you have France and Germany and a bunch of U.K. countries that are really dependent on uh, Russia for energy. So I guarantee they're looking at that again. Uh, I believe it was Sweden and uh, France and even Germany started to undo those plans for um, nuclear energy to be woke, I don't know, right? Whatever it is, but I guarantee you they're double checking that now. But what I can tell you is that when commodities um, 
are in super cycles. Uranium seems to be extremely magnified, okay? Um, so gold and uranium may be a nice pairing trade, may be nice to trade together. And you know me, guys, I stack physical gold and silver first. Then I started looking for other opportunities for gold and silver, and that's expanded to other opportunities in the market. And if you look at this, this is the 25 year chart on uranium. It's been up to 142 before. Okay, it's at 50 now and we're in a bull market. And the last previous high was 73. So I'm liking what we're seeing. The one thing I could tell you is that uranium is the cleanest form of energy worldwide. I think the green revolution, what's going on right now is gonna be critical for uranium. And there are so few uranium producers in the United States, so few companies um, that the market is, is cornered. Those companies literally have the market cornered. They have massive opportunity in front of them. And you know, with the Biden administration and, and different politicians around the world pushing move towards green technology, now energy independence from Russia, I think it's only gonna push, okay? So I wanna show you too. So the last year, last year we're up. Last five years we're up. Last 10 years we're up. Last 25 years. So back in 2010, it was 71. So we're pushing towards that mark, okay? And here's the overall. We looked at that slide. Uh, what I want to show you here is why um, I and so many people say that uh, nuclear power is so clean. Well, this is your emissions from coal. Here's your emissions from gas, uh, biomass, solar, geothermal, hydro, wind, and this is nuclear. And wind, you know, kills all the birds and stuff. It's super jacked up. It looks horrible. And here's nuclear. And the technology with nuclear has moved so far with a lot of these new reactors um, that the risk is much, much, much lower. Now, if you all remember, recently I spoke with the CEO of Gold Royalty Corp, and he explained the royalty model. And, you know, I liked it a lot. It seems to be a, a bit less risk and a lot of opportunity with all the royalties they had. Um, but in that, we talked about royalty companies and, and the opportunities that lay in lay there in well there is literally only one uranium royalty company in the world okay so there are several there's multiple cold gold and silver and other base metal uh, royalty companies but if you understand the royalty business model and understand that uranium is definitely in a bull market there's only one company uh so there's a global uranium revival going on as you can see by this chart here and i believe it's mission critical for energy um, and look at this. It really does appear we have entered a bull market, especially in the in the last, what, yeah, 2021. 20, so right before the beer flu, right? And here's what uranium looks like. I like how it's a silverish color. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's look into the uranium sector and, and see what opportunities there are. Now, if you remember, 11 months ago, I interviewed the CEO of Uranium Royalty Corporation. Um, which trades in the NASDAQ under you, Roy, and it was Scott Melby. Um, now, I want to pat myself on the back. At the, and you guys uh, know I cover only the companies that I think there's good opportunities in. So at the time I did this 11 months ago, their price per share was $2.27. Today it's $4.33. That's $2.06 or a 91% increase in less than a year. Other thing I like about nuclear is it's disaster resistant and resilient. So you all know, uh, I work in emergency management and uh, look at Texas, all the problems they had with the ice storm, critical infrastructure failing, nuclear power plants kept working. Um, solar didn't, wind didn't, uh, they had problems with their coal plants, but nuclear kept working. Uh, the only thing nuclear is really susceptible, obviously too, is going to be your earthquakes and things like tsunamis. So you have to build in uh, mitigations uh, when working on those. Now, if we look at you, Roy, you ROI, which is Uranium Royalty Corp. Last day, we're moving sideways. Just came from a little bit of a dip. So we've been trending down. We're on a little bit of a dip. So is that a good, you know, time to get in? I don't know. Not a financial advisor, but I'm just telling you guys what I am thinking. But we're currently here, year to date, one year, five year. And I never like getting into a company at the highest high, right? And I was talking about it back here, okay? Um, but I think there's still opportunity. The, la the highest high was 
five dollar sixty cents and we're on a bit of a dip right now so maybe an opportunity but uranium royalty corp has uh, been actually one of the best producing and performing stocks in the world for the past three years you're looking at a 396 percent increase i mean that's cryptocurrency action right there and uh it's actually something tangible right i'm into tangibles so i think what's critical to know is that for us the us imports over 90 percent of what it domestically uses so uranium royalty corp and uranium energy corp uh, uec keep pushing the government to make Sure that Texas and Wyoming uh, can operate their mines, in, which are independent uranium mines, and that we are not relying on foreigners, right? We're energy independent. Uh, another thing I like to look at is companies in the news, and Uranium uh, Royalty Corp has a lot of stuff going on right now, a lot of hype, a lot of news. <clears throat> and I also want to show you guys this. Um, their portfolio, so you can see here the different areas. They're involved in uranium, so our neighbors to the north here in the central, kind of central, southwest U.S., uh, and over here in Africa. So if you look here, it talks about all their different um, projects. Now remember, they have stakes in these projects, and they get royalties, right? And they're diversified with different projects in different parts of the world. So say this one in Nambia, there's political unrest, everything's overthrown, and it goes to hell. Well, they still have a lot of other eggs in the basket. And a majority of those are in the U.S., which is good, and Canada, uh, which are a lot friendlier in terms of businesses. And, you know, when you get into countries in South America and Africa and stuff, um, sometimes you can have political issues that cause problems for companies. Um, but it's nice that they're diver diversified in uh, two continents, at least. Um, I do like that. So these are your existing royalty, which are the orange. And these are royalty options, okay? Um, let's see here. Let's just click one of these. Let's go to Lance. Can I click it? Yeah. So if you want, you can go to their website, Uranium Royalty, and this tells you about each project. So you can see this one, 67,000 uh, permit acres. Uh, and it really gets into the nitty gritty, like $31.77 per pound, which is really good. Uh, and it goes into history. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Um, are you still only physical gold and silver? Have you started to diversify a little bit and get exposure to some of the companies, you know, that, you know, if we think physical gold and silver are going to do well, why would the companies that produce it not do well? Right. And then thirdly, um, if you've done both or just one and you're interested in maybe the uranium sector, let me know. I try to look at it at things that are going to be big, six months, you know, three years, five years, ten years, and I can tell you, the push for clean energy is going to continue, and right now this is literally the only royalty company in the world, um, and to me, royalty companies and have some uh, good opportunity attached to them um, than just individual companies. This you're betting on a whole group of things, whereas individual companies, just individual company, but. I do look at individual companies and try to find good uh, things there. But lately, I've been really liking uh, the royalty model. And I wanted to let you guys know what I was thinking and get your feedback. Anyways, guys, hope you liked the video. And please check out my channel. 20,500 subscribers. We are on the push to 30,000 subscribers. Can we do it? I know we can. I put out a couple videos the last couple days. Uh, did some interviews, did some different things, even ate some Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kentucky. Come on, who else is doing that? Uh, but yeah, guys, I hope you had a uh, fun time with this video. I hope it was useful for you. And i just like to share my mind with you and let me know if, what other content you would like to see. And I guess I'll say, catch you on the next one. Woo! One stacker.